Good morning everyone. My name's Darby and this is my house where I have some chickens. I thought that I would show you some of my chickens. You can see some right here. They'll come and say hi while we do our story time. All right, we're on to our book. It's called Chicken Talk. You can hear them talking, can't you? Bark, bark, bark. It's by Patricia McLaughlin and the pictures are Jarrett J. Kroska. Chicken talk. You guys listening to the story back there? I think they're listening too. Farmer Otis and his wife, Abby, loved their chickens. Their children, Willie and Abby, loved them too. All in all, there were 11 hens. Beatrix, called Trixie, Bitsy, Grace, and then there were seven white feathered Joyces, named after Abby's mother, Joyce, who loved white chickens. Joyce, 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 Joyce. There was one colorful rooster named Pedro. Who is pro he protected his hens from foxes, hawks, and weasels. This is Pedro. He looks very proud. Do you think he looks proud? Yeah, he does. They're listening very carefully, aren't they? Abby made them salads with fresh lettuce and arugula from her garden. She collected their eggs in the hen house. She says, thank you, dear girls, as she puts the eggs in her basket to sell to the neighbors. See, they're all eating the arugula and the lettuce. Willie and Belle wrote each hen's name on her eggs. Trixie, Bitsy, Boo, Grace, and the Seven Joyces. The neighbors liked that. They had their favorite hens. Hello. <laughs> They want to see the pictures too. Willie and Belle read books under the big tree. The chickens peered and pecked at the books and cocked their heads at Willie and Belle when they read them new ones. Every day, Willie let the chickens out of their big pens so they could scratch in the dirt for bugs and worms, their favorite. They loved being out and about. While Pedro, the rooster, lurked in the yard watching for danger, because that's his job, the hens sometimes sat on the porch terrace and looked out over the yard like elegant ladies. They do look elegant, don't they, this, those three Joyces? I think so. One morning, Willie had a great shock. Belle, he called. Come quickly. Belle ran from the garden and Willie pointed. Did you write that? Belle looked, she shook her head. In the dirt they read a message that said, no more arugula. Maybe mama wrote it, said Belle, or papa. Willie shook his head. They're at the market. And only the chickens eat arugula, he said. Otis and Abby drove into the driveway, their parents, and they walked up the hill with some shopping bags. Willie pointed to the word scratched in the dirt. Trixie strutted over and looked at Otis and Abby with her bright, beady eyes. <laughs> Trixie wrote that sentence, whispered Otis. Yes, said Abby. Don't tell anybody. They won't believe us. They'll think we're nuts. Abby nodded. I thought Trixie liked arugula. When Abby went to collect eggs in the morning, she called another message. Otis, Willie, and Belle came running. The sentence read, the fox is not intelligent. Otis looked at Pedro. I heard a kerfuffle near the pen last night. Good job, Pedro, called Otis. I heard your squawking and the flapping of wings. When I came out, the hens were safely in their hen house and you looked very proud. Do you think there'll be more chicken talk, asked Abby? Yes, said Otis. Yes, said Belle. And there was. Willie and Belle found more chicken talk the next day under the tree. 
more stories about brave chickens. That's Boo, said Willie. She always has her beak in a book. They learned their letters from looking at our stories, said Belle. I think they did too. Soon the secret came out. Trip the mailman found a sentence in the dirt by the mailbox. You drive too fast. Cheerful chickens cross this road. Did you write that, Otis? asked Trip. No, said Otis, the farmer. Bitsy did. She's bossy. Sounds almost poetic, said Trip. Too poetic for a chicken. No one in town will believe that your chickens can write. I don't believe it myself. And the townspeople didn't believe it. How could a chicken write? Why would a chicken write? No other chickens in town wrote messages. Come see for yourself, Trip, said Otis. Put up your tent and spend the night. Trip brought his small brown tent and sleeping bag and pillow. He set up near the chicken yard. Everyone went to sleep. There was a full moon. Early in the morning, while Trip was still sleeping, Willie let the chickens out of the pen. Is this a good part, Sparkalina? It is. Yes, there's the picture. In the kitchen, Otis smiled as he drank his coffee. I think he knows what's gonna happen. And soon it happened. Outside, there was a loud howl from Trip. Otis opened the kitchen door and looked out. Trip clutched his pillow, his tent collapsed on one side. He pointed to the message in the dirt. You snore and there is a snake in your tent. <laughs> A small snake slithered off into the bushes. It's true, said Trip, trying to catch his breath. <gasps> Who wrote that? Pedro walked up to him, his eyes shining. I'd say it was Pedro, said Otis. And you, said Willie. Look, they're all looking. Chickens are very curious. Now everyone in town knew about the chicken talk. Being the mailman, Trip saw everyone when he did his deliveries and he told them how he was saved by chicken talk. Everyone in town bought more eggs and they wanted to know the chicken talk of the day. And there was lots of chicken talk. Too hot, can we have a fan? Too much rain, we need an umbrella. There are new chicks, come see. That's exciting. Has Grace written anything, asked Abby one day. Well, Grace is shy. Maybe she doesn't have anything to say, said Farmer Otis. Grace was Otis's favorite hen. She had golden feathers lined with black. Sometimes the sunlight made her feathers gleam like jewels. She is quiet, said Abby. I like the quiet, but it wasn't quiet for long. On Sunday morning early, there were seven messages. Too many Joyce's. I'm the real Joyce. I'm not Joyce and not me. I've never been a Joyce. I'll never be a Joyce. No more Joyce's. What will we do, said Abby. Nothing, said Otis, they'll tell us. What do you think? And they did. Names were found all over the dirt yard. Willie and Belle discovered them in the driveway and in the pen by the barn. Josie, Louisa May Alcott, that's an author. Jane, the real Joyce, hmm. Mickey, Emily Dickinson, another author, she writes poetry. Belinda, Trip again, the mailman, found one name in the dirt by the mailbox. Who's Belinda, he called. One of the Joyce's new names, said Otis. And then it was quiet. Peaceful, said Otis. Papa, said Willie, what? We'll never tell all the white 
feathered dresses apart, no matter what they name themselves. Oda smiled. I know. Believe me, they'll tell us. <laughs> More chicken talk, said Belle. In front of them, scratched in the dirt, were two short sentences. We love you. Good night. Grace came over to look at them all. Grace, whispered Otis. It was you. Grace, said Abby. Grace, said Willie and Belle together. That was the kind of chicken talk they loved. The end. I like that book. My chickens do a lot of talking. You can, might be able to see they're having a bath down there. They have bath in the dust. It gets rid of all the dirty things off of them. The dirt falls off. Kind of the opposite of our baths, huh? Well, now that we know about hens, which I have, they lay eggs and chicks, the babies, and roosters, the boys who uh, warn the hens and the chicks if there's any danger. Let's sing a song as it's morning here. So it goes like this. When hens get up in the morning, they always say good day. When hens get up in the morning, they always say good day. They say, that is what they say. They say, they always say good day. When chicks get up in the morning, they always say good day. When chicks get up in the morning, they always say good day. They say, that is what they say. They say, they always say good day. When roosters like Pedro get up in the morning, they always say good day. When roosters get up in the morning, they always say good day. They say cockle doodle doo. That is what they say. They say cockle doodle doo. They always say good day. Yes, Sparkalina. Sparkalina likes the song too. I think we should go collect an egg. Wait right here. Oh, there's somebody who wants to lay an egg in the nest. Yes, that's pretty exciting. I wonder if there's any eggs in there right now. It's too crowded with that in there. Oh, here's Sparklina. Oh, look, already one egg so early in the morning. And there'll be lots more eggs to gather today. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody.